Hi everyone, welcome to the Get Unstuck show with me, Sarah. Showing up here every week to help you move forwards with your health. So this is for you if you're a busy, health conscious woman looking for natural ways to move forwards with your health. So we're here every week and we talk about things like seasonal living, the moon cycles, we talk about nutrition and movement. And we're really here to support you in elevating your energy, upgrading your mindset, finding the calm amongst the chaos of modern day living and using practical tips that can light you up every day, like little rituals. And today I'm going to be talking about the darker half of the year. So it's the 31st today, so happy Samhain or happy Halloween, depending on what you celebrate. But we, um, in traditional Gaelic and pagan and druid, uh, the eightfold will of the year, Samhain, also known as Halloween, is a celebration of the end of the harvest season and it really marks going into the darker part of the year for us living in the northern hemisphere. So I can speak from, you know, feedback from you beautiful tribe here, from my personal experience, but also medically and statistically, as we move into this half of the year, we're going to see depression rates soaring, we're going to see low mood, we're going to see sleep affected, we're going to see illnesses more prevalent. So it can, health-wise, and mental health and physical health-wise, be a really challenging part of the year. So what I wanted to speak to you today was some mindset shifts that can really help support this. And in a mindset shift, of course, everything begins with a thought. And a thought will create an action, and an action creates your reality. So everything starts with a thought, remember that. So this is a mindset shift that's going to have an impact on the rest of your life. <laughs> um, so I'm going to speak a little bit about the eightfold will of the year. So I'd love to know in the comments if you're watching this on replay, have you heard of the eightfold will of the year? Do you know what it is? Um, I'm going to get my notes up so that I don't miss one, but I am celebrating uh, the last year or two, no, probably two or three years I've been celebrating all the points on the eightfold will of the year. So in like our mainstream culture, we really kind of just celebrate Christmas and we might have a nice summer holiday and they're kind of the two markers of the year. We've got our hallmark celebrations like Valentine's, but really in a way of bringing people together, we kind of use Christmas or maybe a summer holiday. But in the eight full will of the year, you've got a celebration every six weeks. So it divides the year up into six week markers. And we've got four solar festivals, so we've got two equinoxes and two solstices, and then four pastoral festivals. So these are to do with the land and harvesting, that kind of thing. So I'll go through them all now. So Yule, Y-U-L-E, would be Christmas or winter solstice. Six weeks later, we have in bulk, which is kind of when the snowdrops start to, the little flowers start to poke out. It kind of marks the end of winter. We then have Easter, which would be Ostora, um, which would be the spring equinox. We then move into Beltiane, which is when traditionally the cattle would be let back onto the field, kind of marking we're going to start to uh, see some more growth with nature. We then move into Letha, which is the summer solstice. We then got uh, Lunasar, which is Lamas, which is the first harvest. It's usually the harvest of the grains. Mabon. And today we have Samhain, which marks the end of the harvest. So perhaps your children at school might be having their harvest festival, or you can remember back to the harvest festival. And then we move back to Yule, which is in six weeks time. And that would be the winter solstice. So between now, Samhain, and Yule, which is winter solstice, this is going to be the darkest part of the year. Now the winter solstice now will then mark that we're moving back into the lighter parts of the year. And I do understand this can be a real challenge. We had the clocks change at the weekend and the nights are dark, right? The mornings are going to be dark as well. So um, what I would love for you to start to think about is how you can really support yourself in a deeper way between this six week period, because it could be the most challenging. So does it mean, for example, it's Halloween, so there might be a lot of sweets and candy around, 
and sugar really can spike anxiety and it does not help our sleep it's a stimulant so if we're eating sugar in the evening if we're eating the chocolate and the candy know that it will affect your sleep so can we start to put in some perhaps uh i like to use curfews around so i don't restrict myself i can still have you know something sweet but i'll have it earlier in the day because i know it's not going to spike my sugar blood sugar levels as much before bedtime which is really when I need to be resting and healing and getting into bed and giving my nervous system a rest and so in this is the season that can really um be initiate initiate a place of stillness and that can be really challenging in modern day living and it asks us to be still and simply be where we are not moving forwards not moving backwards, but being utterly present, just suspended in this moment here, not concerned with the past or the future. And it could be a real challenge in modern day living, right? We're, we constantly have demands on us. So you, you can use this season to really try to be present, as, be, as present as you can. So it's a beautiful season to be doing slow and restorative yoga, to be doing some meditation, to perhaps be spending a little bit more time at the home, starting to um, light candles and make your home a little bit more of a comfortable place to be. Perhaps there was a pile of books that were stacking up over the summer and now's going to be time to start doing a little bit more reading or crafting. If anyone's into their crafting, I'm trying to get into macrame. I have the things there. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> so perhaps for me, this six week period, this six week um, sawain to yule can be a good time for me to start to um, bring some crafting in for me. Something that slows the heart rate down, uses your hands and actually said to be a serotonin boost. And those are the things naturally where the, the mood starts to go a bit lower there's less light to stimulate us. We might find that we want to bring some foods in that support us in mood support. So for me, it would be ceremonial grade cacao, which we sell on our website, which naturally boosts the happy chemicals within the body. So we don't want to be spiking them artificially all the time, but because modern day living is very stress inducing, it is nice to have those extra things in the diet that can support you when you tune in and feel like you need it. So this might really be the season for you to bring those in. So what I'd like to invite you to do is join us for a Samhain celebration. I've put together a little ritual package and it's a 40 minute restorative yoga session which celebrates Samhain and it's accessible to all levels so it's 40 minutes it's quite short but we get into our breath work we get into postures that are a little bit longer hold and allow you to relax the body which is you know really important this time of year as we go colder we can be tensing up the mind can be very tense as well so using these techniques to go into this still place to go into the present moment and I've also put in there a separate recorded meditation, which is 15 minutes, and it's an ancestral healing meditation. Um, so Samhain is supposed to be when the veil is thin between the two worlds, the afterlife and the present life. And, you know, we do see that in Halloween because we see the ghoul costumes and the uh, skeletons, and the ghosts and the whatnot. Um, so it has been slightly, <laughs> slightly misconstrued, but this is a place of deep healing that can be offered. So we can connect with our lineage, our past ancestors, and they can bring forward wisdom and messages from, for us. So if that sounds good to you, it's only seven pounds. It's available on our website and I'll put the link in the comments. So once you've got it, it's yours to keep. So you can practice that yoga a few times if you don't get time to do it on actual Samhain. You've got this six week period to do it. So it's a, a really beautiful time to offer yourself a moment to slow down and a ritual like that. So whatever you get up to, I hope you have lots of fun. Enjoy the sweet stuff, but you know, try not to have it too late in the day. And let me know if you do the Samhain ritual, how you get on. Lovely to see you all. See you soon.